Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai. Call Halau La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which means all praises to the Father Yahweh in the name of the Son Yahweh Shai. I also want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. All right, and I'm going to call this topic Pressure. Pressure. All right, and before I go into the scriptures, let's get a quick Google search on the meaning of pressure. Pressure. It says continuous physical force exerted, exerted on or against an object by something in contact with it. All right, which is a uh, slight extra pressure he applied to a hand. All right. Now it says the use of persuasion, influence, or intimidation to make someone do something. All right. It says the many pressures on girls to worry about their looks. So let's get the last one. It says attempt to persuade or coerce someone into doing something. All right. And that's what we was looking for. The pressure. Because being in his truth. All right. You're going to be <clears throat> uh, tempted. You're going to be pressured. Okay, you're going to be tried. And these are these are the the obstacles in which we have to get through, you know, to, to not fall short. Because when pressure is applied, it shows you who you truly are. And the days that are approaching in the near future, which is now, you know, the hours of temptation, Jacob's trouble. A lot of pressure is going to be uh, pressed against us. All right. Like in the first definition, continuous pressure, excuse me, continuous physical force exerted on or against an object by something in contact with it. So it's going to be a lot of pressure forced against us. And just like this, and it says in number two, the use of persuasion, influence or intimidation. To make someone do something. And if you know what I'm thinking of, what is it that they want you to do by the force of their intimidation, by the force of their persuasion, by the force of their influence is to take the mark of the beast. And that's the RFID microchip. All right. These things <clears throat> are going to come upon you as is written in Revelations 3 and 10. All right. Let me um quick. Let me grab that real quick. This is Revelations chapter 3, verse 10. It says, because thou has kept the word of my patience. And we understand the word, the meaning of patience, which means to suffer. All right. So that pressure, that suffering, that, you know, the temptation for you, you know, Satan wanting you to go off, you know, you being tried. All right. Because thou has kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, and know that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power, Yahweh, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, Yahweh, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. Which cometh down out of heaven from my power, Yahweh, and I will write upon him my new name. All right, so that's the pressure. And while these things are going on, if we stay in the right mind, all right, the right mindset, which is to have faith in the Lord, no matter how much pressure is being forced against you, you won't break because the Lord has truly sealed the elect. The elect is not going to take the mark of the beast. The elect is not going to crack under pressure. The elect is not going to make um, uh, temp uh, uh, permanent decisions on temporary matters. All right. The elect is going to hold firm 
with his feet striding the truth and enduring all the way to the end. And that's even uh, if it has to be unto death. All right. So <clears throat> with that being said, let's get these quick precepts I had uh, put together. All right. So starting with the first precept, this is James 1 and 12. Because, uh, excuse me, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So you see, here in the scriptures, it says, blessed is that is the man that endureth temptation. All right. The, the man that is taken by the temptation, he's not blessed. But the man that endureth. That endureth, all right, the sufferings, the patience, the pressure of him being tempted. And he endureth, and he endureth his uh, integrity toward Yahweh Bashem Shai. That man is blessed. It says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, and we all are going to be tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. All right, so this is Psalms chapter 118, verse 5. I call upon the Lord Yahweh in distress. The Lord Yahweh answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord Yahweh is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. And that's exactly the, the thoughts and the spirit you have to have <clears throat> when you're going through, when you're having pressure. Okay. You know, brothers go through pressure now, but guess what? It's to build you up. If you endure with your integrity toward the most high and never give in to temptation, you know, going back into the world, doing the things that you was doing when you was of your own, when you was of the old man spirit. All right. That the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me read it again. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord Yahweh answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I would not fear. What can man do unto me? So pressure, you know, it it, it, uh, it draws fear. And the Lord also said in the scriptures, he doesn't give us the spirit of fear. All right. Paul even said, we're more than conquerors through him that love us. And that we can't be persuaded. And that will be the elect. Nor nakedness, nor peril, nor sword, nor principality can separate your love and your integrity and your faith toward Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because the first thing that the men of the Lord are going to do in distress, they're going to call upon Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And you better believe it. The Lord is going to be there. All right. The Lord is a, 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 faith, a faithful. Uh, 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 the Lord is faithful. All right. So it says 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There have no temptation, temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But the most high is faithful. See. <laughs> See? Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So the Lord does not give us anything too hard for us that we are not able to bear. The Lord knows exactly what our spirits can take and how much we can take and how much pressure, you know, we can take. That's why we need the Lord, Yahweh Shai. We need our Savior, man. All right. It says, there have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. So that means, brothers, no matter what you're going through, no matter what it is, other brothers don't went through it, too. Other brothers in the body of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah have been through it, too. And some brothers probably have been even uh, going through worse things than so have what you probably going through, you know. You always have to think on that matter. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But the most high is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. All right. So even in your temptation, the Lord makes a way for you to escape. And how is that way to escape? By calling on the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so Second Corinthians chapter ten and three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but
but mighty through the most high to pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhorted itself against the knowledge of the most high and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach, Yahawashah. All right. So the key point is there is that for this topic, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And this is a truly a mental, spiritual fight. This is true mental, spiritual war. You know, the flesh is always uh, 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 desiring for lust, but the spirit is always willing. Like the scriptures say, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, it's certain things, situations we got to we go through and, and the flesh wants you to do what the flesh desire. But the spirit, you know, be telling you, hold off and be patient, you know. So it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Because really, truly, your fight is within you. You are your biggest enemy at the end of the day. All right. Uh, we got that from uh, Elder Apostle Gabar. He always uh, pushed that out there, that you are your biggest enemy. And that's a fact, man. You know, your biggest enemy is you. You have to conquer yourself. You have to be able to rule over your own spirit. And we all have to do that. We all slip up. We all fall. We still in this flesh, you know, these uh, chains of darkness. And we are of the flesh. And we do. We're not perfect. But for the most part, you know, you want to live more for the spirit than you are living in the flesh. All right. So let's get to the next precept. This is Proverbs chapter 24 and 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thou strength is small. And that's another thing to ask the Lord for is strength, all right, when you're going through pressure. We always put, it's always pressure upon the men of the Lord, you know. It's pressure probably within your family pressing against you, you know, your children, your woman, you know, your job, you know, your, you know, your, you know anything, everything of this world is pressure, man. It's always pressed against you, you know. So it says, if, if thou faint in the day of adversity... Thou strength is small. And if you're not praying, you know, this also goes for me. You know, everything I say in these videos is also I, it, it applies to me first. You know, so if you're not praying, <clears throat> then you're not going to receive the, 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 the things you need. All right. The Lord said you receive not because you ask not. You know, strength is a good thing to pray for. Integrity. Um, take not thy Holy Spirit from me, creating me a clean heart, uh, uh, continuing to grow in the spirit, uh, to be vigilant, to have the spirit of discernment, you know, all these things in which you think that all these things that you can think of in these, these, uh, these, uh, these, these traits, these treats, these traits, you know, you want to have unto yourself so that what in that day of, of, of adversity, you don't faint, you know? And this truth, you truly have to, it has to be in you. You know, another brother can't hold your hand, you know. A brother can be there for a pick-me-up to motivate you, you know, pray for you. But if you, yourself, you are not having that uh, sincere spirit, willing spirit to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, then that's all on you. Hey, the Lord said, uh, don't say the Most High made you go off. I believe that's in the Apocrypha. You can't say that the Lord made you go off. Because at the end of the day, it's you going off, not the Lord. And the Lord doesn't tempt you with evil. All right? That's Satan. You know? The Lord put all the tools here. He put, he gave us great prophets, uh, elders, teachers. He gave us our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right? King David. All these examples are here uh, for, for strength in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The keys, the keys are all here. It's about you applying it. You know, you can know the breakdowns of this. You can know the breakdowns of that, you know. But if you don't really have that true essence of faith, that true, pure sincerity of faith and willing, willing spirit for the Lord's sake, then what's all the other stuff good for, you know? And it's all, we're all going to be tested, man. So it says Proverbs 24 and 10, if thou faint in the day of, of adversity, thou strength is small. All right, this is uh, Romans chapter 12 and 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that ye may prove what it is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. So the Lord tells us through, through here with Paul how, you know, what manner of person we ought to be. And it says, be not conformed to this world. You can't have the best of both worlds. You know, you want to party, you want to do this, you want to do that. But then you claim to be a man of the Lord on the weekend. Oh, that ain't working. That ain't going to work. All right. You have to be a man of the Lord 24 seven, even off camera. You know, it got to be in you to have the thought, the, the Lord's thoughts in your mind every day. It just got to be in you. It says, and be not conformed to this world. So don't conform yourself to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed. So it's all, it's all about transforming your spirit. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what it what is that good, all right, and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. So it's all about doing the will of the Most High. And one thing David he stressed was was doing the things that the Lord delight in, you know, doing the things that the Lord delight in. So when the Lord sees your works, he's pleased. You know, the angels appease the wrath of the Lord. Whenever the Lord send them out, they please them. They appease the most high. All right. And the most high is, is satisfied. All right. With the works that they do when he tell them to do, you know, so how much more us in these chains of darkness. All right. And the Lord has given us a second chance. All right. Especially in this time now of the time of repentance before the doors of repentance close. So you want to do the things the Lord delight in. All right. Uh, uh, this is first Peter and another thing, uh, not to stray away from the topic, but pressure doing the things that the Lord delight in. So when that time come and pressures are pressed upon you, you know, it's not a hard thing to be squeezed, you know, when you are in a squeeze situation, because it's all about that pressure. If they say pressure bust pipes, you know, well, the pressure shouldn't bust our pipes because our pipes are the spirit. That's given from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So this is first Peter chapter one and verse six, wherein ye greatly rejoice. though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. See, see, these temptations bring pressure upon you. You know, that's why you're supposed to cut certain things off if you know that it affects you. You know, if you know rap music is a demon, you just coming into this truth. Don't listen to no rap music, man. You know, if your homeboys in the world, <clears throat> um, you know, you get tempted by them, you're supposed to cut them off. Don't deal with them no more. You know, it's just, those are just examples. So it says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need, need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right. So the trial of our faith, that's the pressure. We all have to go through it. And it says it's being much more precious than of gold that 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 perisheth. Though, though it though it be tried with fire and we're truly being tried with fire, man. All right. You know, you have to really check your spirit so that you don't bug out. You don't get pissed off and lose it. You know, being in this God forsaken, wicked ass place, man. You know, we're vexed every day. You know, you see the wicked, you see the wicked, wickedness of our people. You know, you're looking upon these, these homosexuals, you know, and this madness. But you got to remain calm through the fire, man, because we're catching hell now. All right. And also, you know, oh, it's that, um. Uh, uh, what is it? Zephaniah or Zechariah 2 and 8 when it gets into the, um, the fire going through the fire the Lord has saved the one third and he numbered the two third well that's twofold man all right because we're catching hell now and also when the Lord shoot off those nuclear missiles the elect is going to be saved right before the nuclear fire hit man all right so it says the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth that perish, perish, it says, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai. All right. 
So this is my last precept here. This is Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say of the Lord Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. All right. So the Lord with his elect, he's 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 looking upon us to for good, you know, for the good, for the thought for the thoughts of peace and not of evil. You know, the Lord is not an evil power. He's a righteous power. He created the evil to make balance. All right. And our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, is rooting for us, you know, to endure all the way to the end, man, you know. So I hope this lesson was edifying based on pressure. I wanted to, I hope I stayed on topic good enough. Um, but if you was edified, you know, I've done the job, you know. So uh, with that, I hope you brothers was edified. Once again, want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rakhak Wadash. I like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.